Oh, hey, I know we haven't formally met. My name is Danny Boy, by the way, but I'd like to ask you a fun bit of a trivia question. Who led all major league center fielders in F4 in the year 2010? I'll give you a minute to cook up an answer. By the way, this background track is a lo-fi version of the song Clairvoyant by the story so far. It'll absolutely rip your heart out if you're into that sort of stuff. Oh, right, the question. Got your answer nice and ready? We'll throw it right in the nearest garbage can because the answer is Andres Torres of the San Francisco Giants. Yes, really. This guy led all MLB center fielders in F4 and went on to win a World Series championship. And you've probably never even heard of him unless you're a diehard Giants fan like myself. Seriously, guys, what happened this year? Anyways, Andres Torres is a former Guatemalan cyclist who... No. Andres Torres is a Puerto Rican boxer born in 1948 who... Seriously, there's so many different Andres Torres articles on Wikipedia. Hold on. All right. Andres Torres was born in Patterson, New Jersey in 1978, but actually grew up in Aguada, Puerto Rico. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Puerto Rico is quite the pipeline, and this provided Torres with the perfect opportunity to develop into a stud. But he actually played very little baseball growing up and didn't become serious about playing until the age of 18. Now, I just want you to think about that for a sec. You know, plenty of kids are getting drafted at this age, and some even younger at 17. International players are signing even two years younger at 16. Andres Torres didn't even start taking the thought of being a professional baseball seriously until this age. He'd been a track star up to this point at Dr. Carlos Gonzalez High School, not that Carlos Gonzalez, and he'd ran a 10.3700 meter. Torres was an absolute burner, and that speed got him noticed by area scouts who'd pushed him to pursue a baseball career, and that's exactly what he did. Yeah, there's nothing statistically for his college days, but Apparently, he performed well enough at Miami Dade. Is it Miami Dade? Daddy? Whoa. There's nothing statistically for his college days, but apparently, he performed well enough at Miami Dade Community College to get himself drafted twice, including a fourth round selection by the Detroit Tigers in 1998. And he'd end up signing on with them. Fun fact this is actually the same college Mike Piazza was drafted out of in the 62nd round as a favor. Hmm, some favor. Torres continued to be an absolute demon on the base pass with 180 stolen bags and 239 tries from 1998 through 2002 as a minor leaguer, while also possessing an elite eye for a guy who never showed a ton of power. Seriously, as a 21-year-old A-baller in 1999, he posted a 385 on base percentage despite hitting just 236 and slugging 324 because of his 92 walks. He'd posted a career high of 67 steals and 83 tries in 2000 while raising his average 43 points to a respectable 279. Not that bad Batting average is the be-all end-all, but come on, it's the early 2000s and he's trying to be a lead-off hitter. Managers aren't going to care about his eye if the batting average isn't sparkling. And as it would turn out, that's exactly how things would end up for him as he got his first call-up in 2002. Okay, the walks also took a steep decline and a 214, 264, 282 line over three short seasons isn't going to cut it, regardless of how fast you are. But the Tigers were more than willing to cut him in the middle of the 2004 season. Bazinga. Sorry. Torres would bounce around for a few years with a brief Major League stint with the Rangers in 2005, being his last time in the Majors for a good while. I know you're probably thinking, well, I thought you said he was a Dark Horse MVP candidate in 2010. I did. That's the fun part, and we're almost there, I promise. So Torres was so desperate for a job, he even called the Tigers asking for a job in 2007, and it worked. Shoot your shot, fellas. He'd actually posted a very productive 292, 363, and 484 line between AA and AAA, and... Still no call. In 2008, he would sign with the Cubs and posted a career-high 892 OPS with 29 steals, thanks in large part to his hitting instructor, Chris O'Leary, instructing him to try modeling his swing after Albert Pujols instead of his worm-killing approach of attempting to beat out infield singles. But even still, no call. Then in 2009, he'd sign with the San Francisco Giants to a minor league deal with an invitation to spring training, and he absolutely tore it up with a 400, 463, and 614 slash line. That included three bombs and five steals, earning himself a reserve outfielder spot and getting back to the majors, wait for it, for the first time since 2005. Hold up, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. He'd also only had 19 at-bats since 2003, so to say his story was one of perseverance is an understatement. So, how did he handle his first taste of the bigs in a half decade? Really, really well. Granted, it was only 170 plate appearances, but he slashed 270, 343, and he slugged 533 with six home runs, including his first multi-homer game and a splash hit off of John Lackey. A fair reminder that he hit just one home run in his big league career prior to this, shout out Dwayne Kuyper. He also managed to hit eight triples in just those 152 at-bats, which even with the absolute abomination that is triples alley, seriously, I hate you so much, why do you exist? <clears throat> Uh, it's still extremely impressive, but all right, small sample size I hear you telling yourself and possibly preparing to type out in the comments. But wait, 
stage more. Torres had finally shown enough to prove he deserved a, uh, who are we kidding, it's the pre-Dynasty Giants. They're still 100% all in on massive free agent bust Aaron Rowan and decided Mark DeRosa was a better fit than Torres. So back to the bench, for now. Eventually, an injury to Eugenio Velez, the guy who previously held the record for the longest hitless streak at 46 at-bats, that would be broken by everyone's favorite hitter, Chris Davis, would create an opportunity for Torres, and he was fine. Well, until May. Once Mark DeRosa went down for the season with a wrist injury, Torres would finally have an everyday role. And from May 14th on, Torres went absolutely nuclear. From May 14th through May 30th, Torres would slash 361, 435, 672. After a respectable June, he would go on another absolute tear, posting a 317, 383, 644 line with seven home runs in July. He'd finish the year with a 268, 343, 479 line with 16 jacks and 26 steals, by far the highest totals he'd ever posted. I mean, that kind of goes without saying. He posted 14 defensive runs saved across all three outfield positions, spending most of his time in center field. He would posted 125 weighted runs created plus and a 6.3 F war, good for 11th in all of baseball among position players, top five in the NL, and the absolute best total among center fielders. So of course he didn't receive a single MVP vote. Seriously, not a single one. Heath Bell and Brian Wilson, two closers, received votes. With Wilson even receiving a 6% share, well that's just the way the cookie crumbles. In the end, I'm sure Torres wouldn't mind as the Giants would win the division in Game 162 and against all odds win the World Series. In that sense, Torres epitomized exactly what this 2010 team was. It's a 32-year-old misfit castaway who, despite flashes of talent, he had no place in the story. He came from nothing. He was nothing. They're not to me. Torres would end up being traded to the Mets after the 2011 season, narrowly missing out on the 2012 World Series. Though. He'd return the year after. That being said, the magic was gone and he'd played his last year. Again, narrowly missing out on the Giants' even year magic and another ring. Still, Torres remains one of the most underrated heroes of the Dynasty era Giants and his 2010 season is truly one of the most shocking seasons of the last decade given the context. Now, he's a spokesperson for ADHD as he was diagnosed with a condition in 2002 and he's actually attempting a comeback to play for the Puerto Rican national baseball team for the World Baseball Classic. All of this nearly a decade after his last big league game as a soon to be 45 year old. Though, knowing what we know about the man, I'm not quite ready to count him out yet. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did and subscribe for more baseball content and I'll see you on the next one.